guys and welcome back to my channel it's yvette and i'm back with another video this week ignore the fact that i am definitely in the same outfit that i was in my last video and it's because i'm kind of clustering my content today today's my day off i just wanted to let you guys know that i appreciate your comments your likes everybody that's subscribed to my channel i just i appreciate you guys so much because like now that i'm definitely taking my social media a little bit more seriously i I just appreciate everyone that's been along with me for this journey. So if you haven't already, I have my Instagram and my TikTok linked down in the description box. I'll also put like my tags here somewhere on the screen um, so that you guys can follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. So in today's video, I wanna talk about something that I get a little bit of like questions on on a regular basis. And this is like operating room related. So this is about my experience taking the periop 101 course from aorn and if you know aorn um it's the association of perioperative registered nurses and most of the time your hospitals will be affiliated with aorn like you'll be taking the course while you're doing your orientation in your operating room. Your educators should get you signed up with AORN's account and stuff, um, and then you'll get to see all of the didactic portion of your orientation. So you will have like a portion of your orientation, like a few weeks where you do like these modules and things, and a practicum after your exam, where you get to like actually practice the skills that you learned during your didactic year. So I'm here to talk about just the didactic part. If you guys want me to do a whole separate video on what my orientation was like, please let me know in the description box. I do have a I'm a new grad nurse in the operating room video where I kind of talk a little bit about it, but like I don't go super in depth. So the type of membership that I got with AORN is the one that came with, the one that my educator had told me about that got me signed up for. So the name of it is a core curriculum didactic or course. AORN offers other types of memberships and things like that, but this is the one that I was signed up with when I was hired. Things that you'll learn in this course will be surgical draping, infection prevention, surgical hand antisepsis or like scrub attire things that you're going to be wearing what's it like like different types of draping for different extremities for example like you'll have like an impervious u-drape for like certain extremities like your arms legs but that's something that you won't get like for example in an abdominal case so you'll get to learn all like the nitpicky things about the operating room things things like that other things that you'll learn is like sterile technique what you can and can't touch when you're sterile environmental cleaning wound cleaning closure and healing, safety of use of equipment, the sterilization process of the instruments, for example, like when you have to, after a case, you have to spray it down with like an enzymatic cleaner and then send it off to CSPD where they will actually like clean the instruments. And you'll kind of get to see that as well, maybe during your orientation time. I know I got to go down to CSPD and actually see how they took the dirty instruments and thoroughly process them and then sterilize them and get them back in the packaging in order for us to use in the operating room. Hemostasis management is another big module in the AORN course, as well as different medications, how to pour medication onto the field with the correct and incorrect ways are. Surgical specimens, how to handle surgical specimens, like certain types of specimens, for example, like your regular surgical pathology versus your cultures versus gunshot wound bullets and things like that, like are gonna be different. Patient positioning, depending on the surgical procedure is another big thing that you're gonna cover in these courses, as well as anesthesia and like smaller things like professionalism and things like that, like interdisciplinary communications between nursing, the surgeon, anesthesia, things like that. So just to make sure that, for example, like all the documentation is complete before the patient comes back into the room. After you've gone through all of these crazy topics, they're gonna have you take an exam. And this exam is 115 questions and you have to make a minimum of an 80% on this exam in order to pass. They, my hospital did give us like a, a, another grace period. Like if you didn't pass the exam the first time, then you could retake it again. I luckily passed the exam on the first time. I got a 96%, I think, or something like that. So yay. Is that my robot? My vacuum robot is going off. Please give me a moment. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm back. Sorry, because that robot would literally like be all in the background noise of my video, and that's what we don't want. So, 115 question exam will cover everything that you've learned during that didactic period. But like sometimes they'll ask things like about like a research based case study that they also give you during these modules. So pay attention to those as well. What I did to study was I would do the modules, kind of pay attention to the modules. I didn't take notes during the modules. I feel like it would have just taken me twice as long to get through the modules if I would have taken notes. So I just read through them thoroughly, watched all the videos that they gave us, and then I would download the study guide at the end of the module. And this study guide has everything already typed out for you. You don't have to write extra notes or anything like that. So all you have to do is like, just make your own like subliminal notes that will help you to study. Um, whatever study techniques that you used in nursing school, definitely pull them out to learn all of this stuff. And you guys should be good. Like, I think if anything, make flashcards for surgical instruments and things like that you, you'll be learning. Watch surgeries on YouTube, actually. Like, I really liked those in order to study, like, because you could see how they drape the patient, how they prep the patient for surgery, things like that. Like all those videos you can find on YouTube from different hospitals and it's super helpful to kind of visualize and see what they're talking about in the modules translated into the, to the video. So I think the hardest thing for me to learn was the surgical instruments because on the screen, a lot of the instruments look exactly the same. So if you could kind of ask your PCD or your nurse educator, if you can open up a tray and kind of go through the names of the instruments and have someone go through them with you because it'll make your life easier once you go to take the exam and they like pop up with this picture and you have no idea what this instrument is. It's much easier to keep up with if you have like touched the instrument, played around with the instrument, kind of know what the instruments are for. My biggest advice with taking Periop 101 is to have patience with all of the things that you're learning. You're learning brand new stuff that you didn't learn in nursing school, unfortunately. This is just something that you have to go through in order to jumpstart your career in the operating room. So don't get too frustrated if you're like not picking things up like right away, it's, it's okay. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this is all I have for you. It's a really short video today. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy your experience and your journeys in the operating room. Please let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm here for you. Drop down in the comments below what kind of videos you guys wanna see from the operating room. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.